Hi and welcome to this video about DLL injection with the QUser APC API. We've seen in a previous video using the Create Remote Thread API to inject a DLL into a target process by creating a thread in that process that would load the DLL of our choosing. One of the problems with this approach is that this is easily detectable by kernel drivers because they can see a remote thread being created, so this is suspicious to begin with. Using an APC is much stealthier, so let's see what that looks like in code. So here's the basic idea. We have our target process, we have our injector process. The injector process is going to take one of the threads within the target process and attach an APC to it. An APC or asynchronous procedure call is a way to run a function in the context of a specific thread, which also means a specific process. So we first need to write the DLL path to the target process address space because that function is going to be using that address space and in fact we're going to force the APC to run the load library function again because it is also suitable in the sense that from a binary perspective it is compatible with an APC function in general. Then we're going to grab a thread in fact to increase our chances of succeeding, we're going to grab all the threads in the target process and use QUser APC to attach that APC to them, hoping that at least one of them will load the APC. I'm saying hoping and that's because with user mode APCs, there's this thing called alertable wait. If the target thread is not going to get into an alertable wait, the APC will not run. Since there's, since there's no way to know for sure which thread will go into an alertable wait at some point, we're going to simply increase our chances by sending these APCs to all threads in the process. There is a way to force a thread to go into an alertable state or alertable wait, but that can cause other issues which I won't be describing in this module. So essentially one of the threads we hope will go into an alertable wait and then use the load library function to load our DLL and we're done. So let's see what that looks like in code. So here's the previous project also. We can see the DLL here which is doing absolutely nothing except just showing some message box. I'm going to remove that message box so, so as to not to interfere with the target process. We'll just prove that this works by using a tool such as Process Explorer to show the list of DLLs in the process. So let me create another project here, add that to this solution. And that project is going to be an APC injector. So let's call that APC injector. So here goes. The first thing we need to do here is to enumerate the threads in a given process. So we can target all these threads within the process. So I'm going to add the classic includes, remove all this boilerplate code, and I'm going to create a function that's going to return a vector of thread IDs. Let's call that enum threads, and we're going to provide a process ID uh, to do the work. So essentially trying to enumerate the threads in a given process. So for that first I'm going to also add include for vector to get the standard C++ vector class uh, to help us build this dynamic array and then we need to perform the enumeration itself and the way to do that is one way of doing that is by using the tool help API and so here, here goes we need to create a snapshot we're going to call the create tool help something snapshot and we need to take a snapshot of all the threads in the system so unfortunately there's no way to uh, to get a list of threads in a specific process, even though that would be very useful, of course. In fact, the only way in this case is to iterate over all the threads that exist and simply filter only those whose process is the PID given. So I'm opening a snapshot here, and just for sanity, I'm going to make sure that this works. So if you get invalid handle value, this means this fails for some reason, usually because we're out of memory, this is unlikely to happen. Let me just return an empty vector here. We can move forward. So the first thing to do is to define a thread entry 32 structure. Let's call that the thread entry. We need to uh, initialize the size here uh, to the uh, size of the structure. Let's do that. And then we can go ahead and start the enumeration by calling thread 
32 first, uh, getting this snapshot here and the first thread in the system. And we're not going to actually examine that because it's going to be one of the idle threads which we don't really care about. So I'm going to instead just uh, do a loop here and call the next function which is thread32 next in a loop, taking the snapshot and getting the thread information. And so if the thread information contains, of course, the process ID, and that's the same as the process ID that we're looking for, we're going to add that to the, to the vector. So I'm going to create a vector here. Let's call that TIDs, and just add one by calling the pushback function, simply adding the thread ID, which is given by a different member here called something thread ID. And essentially we're done, we can uh, close the handle to the snapshot to be nice. And we can then return our list of TIDs. Okay, great. So now we can go ahead and accept a DLL here and the process ID. I'm going to, uh, to save some time just by copying that from our other example here. So here goes, I'm going to do that. So here's the code to get the first so I probably should copy everything and not just that. Let's go with the main, like so. So we have the process ID here, and then we can go ahead and find the threads. So let's call enum threads with the process ID. If the list of threads is empty, then there are no threads in this process, so more likely than not that this process ID just doesn't exist. Let's just print out no threads and just get out of this application. Once we have the threads, we can go ahead and walk over the vector. So for each thread ID, we need to get a handle to the thread. So let's see if we can open a successful handle to that thread. So we need the access, which is thread set context. This is what the user APC API requires, we don't need any inheritance here, we just need the thread ID right there. So if that works, let's perform the injection. If it doesn't, let's move on to the next thread in line. So we need to call the function QUSERAPC. The first parameter is the function itself. So we know that we'll have to cast that to PAPC and func something, but we want to call the load library API here. So uh, we want to do the same thing as we did in the other case for create remote thread is get proc address and look at get module handle from kernel 32 and the function we're interested in is load library A uh, just like uh, before looks uh, okay so we have the handle to the thread and uh, the data is in fact the parameter which is going to be the address P so let me just do some casting here for the compiler to be happy and again I'm going to copy some code here because we have to open a handle and perform the allocation and write the DLL path all that is necessary regardless so we have to do that um, either way let me just hope that that would actually work and then we can go ahead and make the injection by calling the key user APC API and of course hope for the best and essentially that is basically it so we can again close handles if we want to be nice in this case we should also close the handle to the thread again to be nice doesn't really matter that much because the process is going to shut down uh, very soon anyway and that's really all there is to it let's try see if it actually works so it compiles I guess that's a good start let's go ahead and open a command window here Try to open a command window. Here it goes. By the way, notice that the DLL and the target process must have the same bitness. Otherwise, this can't work because a 64 bit process cannot load a 32 bit DLL or vice versa. So we have our APC inject here that's supposed to accept the same kind of parameters. So now let's try something a bit more ambitious than using Notepad. Let's go ahead and use Explore as our target because being within explorer might be much more fun and useful 
um, depending on your definition of usefulness, of course. So we want to inject ourselves inside Explorer to be uh, to have something which is a bit more interesting. So we have the injector here. The process that is going to be 10294. Let's select one of these uh, Explorer uh, processes, and our path was as it was. So we have temp injection. Let's just minimize that for now. We don't need task manager anymore. And so we have x64 debug and simple DLL. To verify, let's open Process Explorer here and find Explorer. So we need that particular Explorer here, the one that has the process ID 10924. Uh, That's the one. Looking at the list of DLLs here, if I sort to look for simple something, simple something shouldn't be here just yet, but it should appear right about in this area. Let me just uh, make this always on top and we can go ahead and press enter. Yes, it did. We can see simple DLL has appeared here within the Azure space of this Explorer process. So there you have it, injecting a DLL into a target process using Qs or APC. This is nicer in the sense that there's no new thread being created, so this is a much stealthier approach.